Hey everybody, welcome back to Fish Den 365 and welcome back to Top Water Tuesday. Doing everything we can to make Tuesdays just a bit more tolerable. Today's Top Water Tuesday is the Coalition Fate, the Dine. Hey, before we get started with this video, I'd just like to request that if you like my videos and you like this one and you like what you're seeing here, please give me that thumbs up. Hit that like button. That's going to help me uh, continue to, to make more of these videos because I can grow the channel. That's what I'm trying to do. And I think one of the best ways is to get a, a good percentage of the people who are watching the video to hit that like button. So I implore you to please hit the like button if you like what I'm doing. If you want to see more of them, that's going to help me continue being out here and continue to make more videos. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to continue to do that. So please give me that like. While you're at it, you can always subscribe to the channel, comment below, and share with your friends. All right, let's get back on it and show you what this bait is all about. So here it is. Here's this bait. Got this one nose hooked. I've been experimenting with this bait and that's the topic of today's Topwater Tuesday. I've been playing with this thing as a topwater bait and I am excited uh, for the upcoming season to use this bait in a number of different scenarios. Uh, you want the short summary? After playing with this bait today, and we'll show you the video of me doing different things with it, my next move will be buying more. I have two packs of these right now. This is called the natural shad color. It's got that dark gray back and then the light belly and the white sides, the dot, the typical dot that a shad has and some very realistic looking eyes as well. And boy, I, I, uh, <laughs> I spent probably two hours playing with this bait today, experimenting with it in a number of different ways, rigged it in a number of ways. Let me go get a hook so I can show you the different ways I rigged this, at least outline it on the bait. I'll be right back. So today when I was using this bait, I, I rigged it in a number of ways. And the first way, or one of the ways was on a owner twist lock hook. This is a four odd. I also tried a five odd. And one way I, I uh, hooked this onto the bait was inserted the twist lock into the nose and had the, the hook come out the side, come out the side of the body so that the bait would lay flat on the water like this. I wanted to see if I could make it look like it was injured on top, and we'll show you some of the footage on that right now. So I have footage of that, and but the first time that I tried it, I actually had a snap attached to this. And then later I tried it without a snap. And so the next way I, I rigged it was the standard way, which was just putting the hook in through, there's a belly slot in this thing. That goes all the way up through the back, and there's a hole in the back where that uh, hook can come out. So I used a weightless hook first, 
and rigged it that way so that it was in the bait like so. Hides the hook very well. And that looked pretty good. You can make it do some different things on top, make it flop around. I also used a weighted hook, a belly weighted hook, one like this. It was a little uh, less weight than this. It was like three eighths ounce. It was, it was a three sixteenth ounce that I used. This one's a quarter ounce. But what I found when I, when I attached a snap to the hook, the bait had this very strange action to it. I'll show it to you on the, on the video here in a minute. And, but it didn't look natural the way it was flopping back and forth. And then I found that if you remove that snap and just tie it directly to the hook, then the bait, uh, the keel's out much better and the tail kicks more. And we'll show you what that looks like right here as well. So you can see the difference between having a snap on the hook and not having a snap. And for me, not having a snap is a more natural presentation. Now, I tried a bunch of different ways and they all look good in different ways. I can see myself rigging it sideways through the side like this when I'm throwing it in pads. And because when you when you when you let the bait sink that way, it, it has this uh, gliding fall to it because the the whole bait is oriented instead of oriented this way, it, it's this way and it falls and it glides. And so if you have a bluegill pattern or even the shad pattern and you throw it out in pads and you work it through the pads and then let it fall through, it looks like a dying bait fish. So hooking it through the side can make sense. Conversely, if you're fishing through something like milfoil, well, then I would probably prefer to hook it this way, you know, the standard way. Throw it out there, let it fight, because it has a really nice swim downward, and then just swim it through the milfoil. So there's, I can see applications for all of these different riggings. And then there's this. So I tried this with a snap and without as well, and it works better without. And what I did was I just got one of these twist locks you can get you can just get the twist lock without the hook and what I do is I just I just insert the twist lock into the nose of the bait and then I put the hook through the bait and through the the loop in the twist lock and that way it can never come out it's not going to tear out it won't come out easily at all and so you can keep this on here for a long time and I threw the bait around this way as well and as a top water where I don't have a lot of cover in the water I would, this is probably how I'll fish it because this thing has this real slow, it stays up, you know, I want it up near the surface. I can move my rod, twitch my rod a few times and it'll come right up and come out of the surface, kick a little bit, and then it looks like it's sick or hurt and comes back down again. And the reason why I stuck with this rig is because I'm thinking about using this in a number of ways, in more open water, obviously for bass, but this particular bait looks so much like a little shad, a lizard, little gizzard shad, or a little herring, or a little alewife that, uh, you know, for me, I like fishing for stripers when that alewife spawn is going on at night. And I was able to make this, in my opinion, look pretty much like what those alewives do. You know, they come up and when they're spawning, they, they get together, they rub together, and they do like a circle on top. And, and uh, with this hook like this, I can make this thing look like one that's hurt or one that's moving around with them. I mean, the, the profile of the bait and the look of the bait looks very much like an alewife and the size is perfect. And so I think I can throw this thing out there and, and they'll be trying to spawn with it because they do that even with hard baits like the redfin and rippling redfin. 
I, but I have to try it. You know, I'm not sure that the stripers will like it or not. You, you never know. The only way to know is try it. But boy, it's almost like fishing live bait, throwing it out there like this and just letting it work slowly and moving it around and flipping it around on top. What I like to do is make it come up out of the surface a little bit and then just kill it and then just really slowly falls and then just pop it right back up into the surface again. Never letting it drop more than a couple of inches uh, you know, six inches down from the surface. It's, so it's really a surface presentation. And uh, that's why it's on Top Water Tuesday because you can, uh, the other thing I found that you can do with this bait is you can use one of these keel weighted hooks, throw it out there and reel it back. And if you have a snap on it, it's not gonna work. It, it'll, it does this crazy, I can't even describe the action, but it doesn't look natural. But without the snap tying directly to the hook, the keel weighted hook, and rigging it the, the standard way like this, well, then you can reel this thing in and this tail has a pretty decent kick to it. It's, it's, I wouldn't call it subtle and I wouldn't call it uh, over, you know, too much either. It's, I'd say it's just about right. And you can throw this and then reel it back at a rate of speed where it's right on the surface and you can make this tail kick, kick out of the surface and it makes a nice wake. So you can make this a wake bait as well. And I can see that working pretty good at, uh, you know, shallow water environments for bass where you just want to cover water. And so, you know, I hope to show you a lot of these kind of applications in future shows because, you know, I, I can see myself fishing it that way is too, that way too, in the, in the right kind of environments. So, uh, yeah, and I'm wondering, there's probably other baits out there that I'm not aware of yet either. And that's the other thing. And maybe someone else makes one that works even better. I don't know. But I think this one works pretty darn good for what I was trying to get out of the bait. And I'm looking forward to giving it a really good go for largemouth, smallmouth, stripers, you name it. I'll be throwing it in a number of different rigging options to best suit the needs and catch those fish. Well, if you like the video, don't forget, like we said earlier, give me that thumbs up. Let me know you like it. Tell your friends, share, comment. Let me know what you think of this bait. Do you have any experience with it? Have you fished it? What are your thoughts? And how do you think it'll work for the applications that you saw in the video and what I described? Please comment down below. And until next time, be safe out there. Hope to see you on the water. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.